Good morning. So it's true, I started programming when I was nine. I got a degree in cognitive science in 94, and in 2000, I was the first person to hold the title Web Services Principal Architect at BEA Systems as we were trying to figure out how HTTP could build an API-driven enterprise. Uh, I spent a half decade at Microsoft after that doing, wait for it, leading the open source and Linux team. It was harder than it, than it is now. Some of you may have seen that they've come out of the closet. Satya Nadella is now seen on stage pointing at slides saying Microsoft loves Linux. So a step at a time. I spent the last half decade as chief strategy officer of Apogee observing what many of you have been observing, which is that every enterprise is becoming a software company. And somehow we need to help each of them get towards a world of applications and services. So what we really should have called this talk is not the making of a modern architecture, having observed everything that we've seen, the conversations at this conference, we should have called it the making of a cloud-native application platform. That's where we're all trying to get. We all know that we're at the dawn of a new era. We walk around with supercomputers in our pockets. Sometimes they even work well enough to make cell uh, telephone calls. Pretty soon, we're going to be driving supercomputers down the highway. Many of us already are. As chips become cheaper, sensors become cheaper, screens become cheaper, we're seeing these everywhere. So people are moving, human behavior is changing, and what we are required to produce is a shift in business that matches the change in human behavior. If an enterprise cannot give you the information and the commerce opportunity in your situation, in your context, wherever you happen to be, they're gonna have serious trouble. Just down the street at MIT Sloan School of Business, for about 20 years, they said the most important thing you can produce, the gold standard of business, was sustainable competitive advantage. They've now said in the last few years, everything is changing too fast. You can no longer seek sustainable competitive advantage. It won't last long. So what can we do instead? Where do we need to take our companies? We need to move to continuous innovation. So it sounds a lot like what we've been talking about at this conference for the last couple of days. So it sounds like Agile, right? So raise your hand if you're currently doing Agile development in an enterprise. Awesome. Please keep your hands raised if, on top of doing Agile development, you're also able to do continuous deployment. OK, so interesting. Thank you. Many people put their hands down on the second question, because what you have is an Agile world where you're doing design to demo, and you're absolutely delighting the teams that you're working with. The business people think it's fantastic. And then you batch up your delivery to IT on a six or eight week schedule to get it into an actual production push. You, my friends, are in the middle of what is called the water scrum fall. <laughs> so how do we get out of the water scrum fall? That's what I'm gonna spend the rest of this time talking about. We know what we need to do is to pair, uh, pair na cloud native applications with the continuous delivery of business value. So. If we can put those things together, then we actually have the very practical tools to do what MIT is telling us to do, which is take us to a world of continuous innovation. Now, because every company is becoming a software company, there's tremendous economic pressure, which is driving the creation of open projects and open platforms. Open source is the answer to global economic pressure, when it's no longer just IT that needs to do IT, right? but financial services, healthcare, telecommunications then all of that pressure to collaborate means we need to reduce the cost of our basic operating uh, ingredients. We're building these into open data centers, into stacks, right? Open compute so the hardware can be open, OPNFV for network function virtualization, open daylight for SDN, OpenStack, Zen, Linux, Cloud Foundry, Docker, Node. These are examples of each element of the stack, but it's crucial to start to see the harmony up and down the stack so we can get out of the old way of doing IT and into the new way where we can get to continuous innovation. So we do all this so that we can enable microservices to, to run correctly, to be addressable from everywhere, to scale, to be able to operate in m multiple data centers. And microservices are great. Per Martin Fowler, uh, they lead to specific requirements. And in his article on this, he actually said, you must be this tall to ride the ride. You need rapid provisioning. You need to be able to have net new IT resources, storage network compute, come up in a matter of minutes or less, not days, not weeks. You need basic monitoring. You need to have feeds of information to find out what's the current state of health of the entire system. You need rapid application deployment, so you must be in continuous deployment, right? 
not just continuous integration. You don't want to be in the water scrum fall. And all of this is enabled by the most important capacity. It's the people capacity. No tool can give you this. This is DevOps culture. When there's this much pressure, you start to see emergent behaviors in a market. Those pressures produce the desire to make certain projects, certain technologies, and make them come alive. So for containers, Docker, amazingly huge. Rocket, hot on their, tr on their, on their ankles. Um, automation tools like Puppet, like Ansible, like Chef, and cluster management for taking these to data center scale clusters, uh, Apache Mesos and Kubernetes. Each of these technologies does an outstanding job at what it does. Think about how much effort you've put into understanding the technologies at your hand, and then think about your own IT organizations and ask how much complexity can they handle in order to give you uh, an environment that allows you to do continuous, uh, continuous deployment and take you towards continuous innovation. What they need is a cloud-native application platform, something that works with everything else but is consistent, gives you the nines, gives you a very clear way to operate it so that you can create this harmony, so you can create this environment in which all of the cloud-native applications can run and you can actually run end-to-end -end agile. Cloud Foundry is a cloud-native application platform. It points to many things, but at its heart, in fact, cl a Cloud Foundry is a place of practice for continuous innovation. So a Cloud Foundry is a noun. Think about foundries. It's a place where you produced material products that were meaningful. You could share time and experience and materials with other artisans. A place of practice, this is very pragmatic. The laying of bricks produces the wall. You have to actually get into the habit of doing things correctly. And the cathedral that we're building, it's not just bricklaying, it's not just a wall, but we're trying to create something amazing, is continuous innovation. So what we, do, what we give you is the technology to create the place. And then we assemble the wisdom of the community in order to create the practices. Let me dive in a little bit into what is inside the Cloud Foundry open source project. The most important piece is at the top. It's the users. They're coming at you from every direction, browsers on different form factors, mobile, a range of devices, everywhere that you can have a screen, uh, an interface, uh, an internet connection, you're going to want to access apps. Also critical is the bottom, infrastructure. We're in a world where we're making a lot of different infrastructure choices. Yes, there's a lot of Amazon Web Services, but we're starting to see Microsoft Azure, we're starting to see Google uh, play in that game. OpenStack, VMware vCloud, DigitalOcean, there's actually an amazing amount of innovation happening at that layer of the stack. So a piece in the middle that you're going to offer to your IT organization to make you happy so that you can run your projects the way that you want has to take care of both ends of those concerns. It has to be open above and below. It has to be clean. We think of it as breaking into three key parts. The elastic runtime, which is what allows you to deploy your applications into it, version them, update them, whatever you need to do. The second tier services is where you have to have some set of capabilities out of the box. If you think about a firehose-based application, you're running it statelessly, you're persisting nothing, but you still need some, ser some services to rely on in this new world. React CS, MySQL, you need to be able to persist information. You need to be able to talk to message queues. Provider-specific services, Cloud Foundry is part of IBM Bluemix. Bluemix also has particular IBM services like Watson. So those are provider-specific services that can be service, surfaced through Cloud Foundry. You have the same programming environment, but you get the advantage of new particular vendors' ideas without breaking compatibility. And then finally, you have user-provided service instances. So every enterprise is made up of tons of IT assets. You need to be able to project those, right? Sometimes monoliths, sometimes really well-structured existing distributed services. You need to project those into the programming fabric so it's easy to compose your microservices that include very large enterprise services. And then finally, at the operations tier, right? And this is where we have to win the hearts and minds of, of IT administrators. Um, logging, scaling, as we all know, auto-scaling is not just scaling up, it's scaling down, right? When the, services, when the resources are no longer needed, let them go. Platform deployment, what's the ordinality? You know, you need N units of this server, M units of that server. Make sure that that can be handled. Health monitoring, make sure you continuously guide the system into the desired state. Two key things that we're doing are refactoring the Elastic Runtime. This is a project called Diego to enable it to not just take build packs, but also Docker and Rocket containers. 
And today I'm very happy to announce uh, we've just launched Lattice. You can go to lattice.cf and you can see a, a Cloud Foundry that will fit on a developer laptop. This will allow you to get the sense of what Cloud Foundry does without having to have an entire data center. In closing, we've talked about a lot of things. This is the most important thing for me. This is why I come to work. This is why I get up in the morning. We see a world of computing that is ubiquitous and flexible. If there are Cloud Foundries everywhere, these are open source installations you can run yourself, then you get the next promise, which is portability and interoperability. Because we don't know enough about the future, because we don't know where we're going to run our workloads, we need something that's easier, higher level of abstraction, so you can take your business critical apps and move them from provider to provider. And finally, vibrant and growing. If we do this right, then we can create a real platform that you can deploy net new applications to, that ISVs can give you an iOS-like experience. What if you could click a tile and suddenly an enterprise application is installed across your data center? That's where we're trying to take the world. I invite you to join us, join me. Um, we're a Linux Foundation collaborative project. We're an open source project. We believe it, we're passionate about it. I invite you to contact me directly at SRAMG or check us out at cloudfoundry.org. So thank you very much.